What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel and today we are going to talk about distributed systems and why I think they are important in web development. And it should take me a couple of minutes to explain all of this and if you don't have time to watch this video then you're going to build applications that will be slow when the traffic is high, they will not be scalable, they will not be reliable as well and they will just have poor user experience in general. So let me explain. Imagine that you are building an e-commerce site with Python and Flask. And if you don't know, Flask is a framework that works synchronously and it is used for building web applications basically. So let's say you're building some REST APIs on the server and you have a lot of different endpoints and one of the endpoints that you have is an endpoint for creating a new order. So what this endpoint should do? First of all, it should create a new order, right? So we'll probably have orders table in the database and we will need to create a new row in this table. So what else? We also need to notify user about the created order. So we will need to send an email to this user with information about the new order. And finally, let's assume that we also need to generate some report file at the end. And um, we need to save this report file on AWS storage. Now, if we try to implement this in Flask, the result could look something like that. So we have this create order API function, which is basically our controller. And this function calls, first of all, create order service that we created before. And this service is responsible for creating a new row in the database, in our orders table. And this service returns an instance of the order class. After that, we call send order email notification service. And this service is responsible for sending an email to the user. And let's say that this service sends an HTTP request to you some email provider that is going to send our email. And the last service that we call is generate order report. So this service generates an Excel file, let's say, and then saves it on AWS storage. Now, it looks good, but what is wrong here? Why this is not efficient? The problem is that sending an email and generating a report file are time consuming tasks. And if we do these tasks in the same process during request and response cycle, one of the problems that we'll have is that the user will wait more time than they should in order to get a response from the server. How much time it will take to get a response is depends. Sometimes it can be quick, sometimes it can be very long. And the example of a slow response is, let's say that our email provider is not responding. So basically we are waiting for the response, but we can't get a response because email provider is down for any reason. And we don't know the reason why it's down. We are just waiting for the response, but we can't get it. How it looks for the user in that scenario. So user clicks on create order button and then waits for five or maybe 10 seconds because our server is not able to send an email. So how can we fix this? We need to change the flow here. We need to decouple our web application. So instead of doing all of these time consuming tasks, our web application could delegate these tasks to other processes. And the way we can achieve it is by using message broker. So basically our web application could publish messages to the message broker and the message broker would then distribute these messages to consumers. And consumers are going to be responsible for executing these tasks. As you can see, web application is not responsible for executing tasks anymore. Basically, it delegates all the work to consumers. Now, the question is, what are consumers? Consumers are basically separate programs that work independently from each other and from the web application itself. For web application, consumers are executed in the background. They are completely independent. Even servers that serve these consumers can be located in different locations. So you can have a separate server 
for every single consumer if you want to. So let's try to understand this flow a little bit better. So we have web application. Right now, web application only creates a new order, and when it successfully creates an order, it publishes two messages. One message is notifications message, and another message is reports message. So basically, we have two different messages. And it publishes messages to the message broker. And in our flow, the message broker is RabbitMQ, but it can be any other message broker. We are not going into the details, by the way, of how RabbitMQ works right now, because it can take some time to explain. But if you want to, you can leave a comment below or like the video, and I will probably make a video just about RabbitMQ. So the job of the RabbitMQ is to deliver messages. In our flow, we have two consumers that are subscribed to our RabbitMQ, and they are subscribed the way that our consumer that is responsible for sending notification emails is going to receive only messages with notifications type. And the consumer that is responsible for generating reports is only going to receive notifications, I mean, like messages with uh, reports type. That's basically the flow. And uh, as you can see, we have four separate processes. And that's what I meant by distributed systems, because we can have one server that runs web application. We can have another server that runs message broker, and we can have another server that runs our consumers, or we can even have two servers, one for first consumer and another one for the second consumer. Now the question is, why is this flow better than the previous one where everything was executed line by line? First of all, our web application is much faster now because it delegates pretty much all the work to consumers. Right now, our web application only creates a new row in the table and then publishes two messages to the message broker, which is fast. And the benefit that we'll get is our user will get a response from the server very quickly. Another important advantage of this flow is that our web application can continue to work even if our consumers are down. So let's say that our email provider is not responding and we decided to stop our consumer. And in that case, our web application will continue to process users' requests despite the fact that our consumer is down. The only problem now is that we don't have a consumer that will process these messages. So basically we can't send an email right now. However, these messages will stay in a queue of a broker and they will be processed later when the consumer is up again and when the email provider starts to work again. Okay, now let's talk about some disadvantages. Obviously, there are some disadvantages to this flow and you might even notice some. Like I said before, our consumers are executed in the background and it's an advantage and a disadvantage at the same time. For example, let's say our endpoint should respond with information about whether the notification email was successfully sent or not. And in the flow that we have here, it's not going to be possible because our web application just publishes a message to the message broker. And it doesn't even know whether this message is going to be processed or not. It just publishes a message and that's it. But there is a work around it. So what you can do is you can integrate WebSockets into your system. So the consumer that is responsible for sending email notifications, when it successfully sends an email notification, it also sends a WebSocket message to the client. And basically it notifies the client that the email was successfully sent. And it could be a solution, however, it's not a quick thing to do to integrate WebSockets into the system and it also adds complexity to the system. But yeah, it can be a solution. Another disadvantage is that our flow became much more complicated. So we have a separate server for a web application, a separate server for a message broker and two separate servers for our consumers. 
If we want to, we can make it simpler and we can have only a single server that serves two consumers. And even if we want to, we can make it even more simpler. But still, you have to agree that it's more complicated than it was before. Okay, yeah, let's recap everything that I said. Distributed systems solve a lot of problems, but they make things complicated. The question is, do you need distributed systems or not? And the answer is, it depends, <laughs> like with everything. If you have a simple web application, then you don't need this. But if you have a medium or large size application, then you need to at least consider that. And the disadvantages that I mentioned are not going to matter for you that much because of the advantages that you get. So that's it for today, guys. And if you are interested in learning more about RabbitMQ and how it works, leave a comment below and I will make a video about that. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Dennis and this channel is all about mastering web development and growing as a full stack Python web developer. If that appeals to you, consider subscribing. And if you like to connect with me even further, you can follow me on Twitter or on my Instagram. Links will be in the description. So thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.